More than 500 million years ago, a frozen hostile Earth awakened. Scary prehistoric creatures began changing at incredible speed. This time of remarkable change is known to the scientific community as the Cambrian Explosion. Creatures from before the Cambrian Explosion predate all recognizable early life, including dinosaurs. These beings were almost alien in appearance, with backwards facing heads, protruding limbs with claws, and some of the craziest eyeballs known to man. Most of them do not exist today. Those that do are distant relatives, barely recognizable to their initial forms. Here is a look at some of the most terrifying and intriguing beings from before this mystifying time period. The first Hallucigenia fossil was discovered more than 100 years ago and it baffled scientists. The creature was tiny, less than 2 cm long and thinner than a hair, but very strange. Hallucigenia was a Cambrian worm with an elongated spiky body, legs and needle-sized teeth that protruded past the jawline and went all the way down its throat. Its fossil sports a devilish grin that helped scientists to identify its head from its tail. Research suggests that this baffling creature sucked food up into its toothy O-shaped mouth like a vacuum cleaner. Despite its unusual appearance, it shares ties with modern-day spiders and Silenurelia worms. Scientists say Halucigeni is helping them to learn more about the Cambrian period, a time when life exploded into a rich array of forms and how it then settled back into the more normal-looking creatures we see today. Perhaps the best word to describe Opabinia is bizarre. With five eyes, a forward-facing proboscis, a third of the length of the body, and a mouth that is not only on the underside of the body but faces backward, and you end up with a creature like no other we know of today. However, when you look at Opabinia within the context of other Burgess shale creatures such as Hallucigenia, Vivaxia, and Anamalacaris, then Opabinia actually begins to look quite normal. They would, however, probably have been able to distinguish between shapes of light and dark, essentially a simple photoreceptor, by having five photoreceptors positioned together and pointing in slightly different directions to one another, Opabinia would be able to see dark shapes passing overhead as the object passed over the receptors preventing surface light from reaching them. These objects may have been the forms of potential predators that Opabinia could interpret as being the sign to take cover to avoid being seen. Further support for this theory comes from the fact that the eyes predominantly point at upwards angles rather than just forward. Opabinia was a soft-bodied animal of modest size, and its segmented body had lobes along the sides and a fan-shaped tail. When the first thorough examination of Opabinia in 1975 revealed its unusual features, it was thought to be unrelated to any known phylum, although possibly related to a hypothetical ancestor of arthropods and of annelid worms. In the 1970s, there was an ongoing debate about whether multicelled animals appeared suddenly during the early Cambrian in an event called the Cambrian Explosion or had arisen earlier but without living fossils. Maybe you have heard of the tardigrade, the tiny creature that's basically indestructible. Ovatia vermis cribratus is its oldest known ancestor. This amazing organism is essentially a worm with legs. More than 500 million years ago, it swayed and danced to gather food while standing firmly on the ocean's floor. The researchers believe that strong recurved claws on the back limbs may have allowed Ovatia vermis and other related lobopodian species to anchor themselves on hard surfaces and stand more or less upright. Two long pairs of spinulous limbs towards the front of the body would then have been used to filter or collect food from water and bring it closer to the animal's mouth. Even though lobopodians have long been known and studied and occupy an intriguing position in the tree of life of invertebrate animals, their ecology had remained poorly understood. Pre-explosion oceans housed creatures called Vitulaculia that resembled seashells with one key difference, they had gills. Aside from these breathing holes, they really didn't have much in the way of sensory components. These were eyeless, legless, armless creatures that could fool even the most learned scientists into believing they were merely rocks or seashells. From their superficially tadpole-like forms, leaf or paddle-shaped tails, and various degrees of streamlining, it's assumed that all Vitulaculians discovered were swimming animals that spent much much, if not all of their time living in the water column. Because all Vitiloculians had mouths which had no features for chewing or grasping, it's automatically assumed that they were not predators. Some researchers proposed that the Vitiloculians were selective deposit feeders, which actively swam from one region of the seafloor to another, while supplementing their nutrition with filter feeding. What could be scarier than gazing into the mirror of time and seeing a snake-like version of man? That's exactly what Picia grasslands is. 
and this flat spiraling sea creature was previously mistaken for a worm, but it's actually the earliest vertebrate found in history. That makes it an ancestor of humans and other vertebrates. Pikia gracilens is an extinct primitive chordate animal known from the Middle Cambrian Burgess Shale of British Columbia. Pikia was a primitive chordate that lacked a well defined head and averaged about 1.5 inches 38 mm in length. The exact lifestyle of Pikia is still uncertain due to its similarity to Lancelot. It was probably a free swimming creature that moved through the water with side to side undulations of its body. As it swam through the water, it may have picked up small morsels of organic matter that were then digested in the gut. Modern oceans are filled with animals of all shapes, colors, and textures. That idea had to start somewhere, and maybe it did with Uvaxia, a prime example of an unusual Precambrian explosion creature. This clever organism was disguised to look like a plant and rested on the ocean's floor. When endangered scientists theorized that Vivaxia could stab would-be predators with its spikes. Vivaxia was originally described in 1899 from an isolated spine that had been found earlier in the Ogyopsis shale. Further specimens were found by American paleontologist Charles Doolittle Walker in 1911 as a result of one of his field trips to the nearby Burgess shale in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. Vivaxia was bilaterally symmetrical, viewed from the top of the body was elliptical with no distinct head or tail, and from the front or rear it was almost rectangular. It reached 5 cm 2 inches in length. Estimating their height is difficult because specimens were compressed after death. A typical specimen may have been 1 cm 0.39 inches high, excluding the spines on their backs. The animal Acaris was a giant for its time. Reaching a length of over 3 feet, this mesmerizing maritime creature resembled a humongous shrimp. Most of its body was made of its head alone. Its bone-crushing teeth were comprised of serrated prongs so long the creature was unable to completely close its own mouth. With arms covered in spikes and eyes sporting 16,000 individual lenses, the animal Acaris is believed to have been the most vicious predator in the sea. Some scientists claim that it fed on trilobites, leaving W-shaped indentations in their hard-shelled bodies that would last in the fossil record for hundreds of millions of years. Animal Acaris is distantly related to modern arthropods, including crabs and lobsters. It didn't survive the mass extinction at the end of the Cambrian. 90% of life on Earth was suddenly, in geological time, eradicated then, in an event known as the Great Permian Extinction. Trilobites were complex creatures living in a simple age. Their bizarre three-part bodies make them the first known examples of hard-shelled animals on Earth. On top of their superior physics, these creatures appeared as scavengers, predators and prey. Their remains cover every single continent, with the exception of Antarctica. The experts believe that trilobites were social creatures with migratory patterns that parallel those of modern animals. As the world changed and new creatures emerged, the trilobites evolved growing keen calcite lenses in their eyes to enhance their vision and complex interlocking mechanisms on their shells that made it nearly impossible to pry them open. By the time trilobites first appeared in the fossil record, they were already highly diversified and geographically dispersed. Because trilobites had wide diversity and an easily fossilized exoskeleton, they left an extensive fossil record. Trilobites saw incredible diversification over time. For such a long-lasting group of animals, it's no surprise that trilobite evolutionary history is marked by a number of extinction events where some groups perished and surviving groups diversified to fill ecological niches with comparable or unique adaptations. Generally, trilobites maintained high diversity level throughout the Cambrian and or the Vision periods before entering a drawn-out decline in the Devonian, culminating in the final extinction of the last few survivors at the end of the Permian period. You can't discuss Precambrian animals without paying tribute to the Fuxian Huid. This ancient variation of an arthropod had quite a unique look. It had limbs that protruded from the bottom of its head, used to filter and then shovel food into its mouth in a process known as detritus swift feeding. And something even crazy was found extended out past its head, its nervous system. This phenomenon is called a postcephalic nervous system, and Fuxian Huid is the oldest known creature on the planet to possess that peculiar trait. Over the course of evolution, certain segments of the animal's body became specialized for certain things while others became less important, and correspondingly, certain parts of the vascular system became less elaborate. In addition to the exquisitely preserved heart and blood vessels, the Fuxian Huia protensa fossil also features the eyes, antenna, and external morphology of the animal.
It looked more like the worm on an angler's hook that any living fish we might recognize today, but it still takes the record for the oldest known fish to date. The 580 million year old fish Metasprigina volcotta was about 2 inches long, bore a pair of large protruding eyes and small paired nasal capsules. It breathed through seven pairs of external gills. It had a stout rod supporting its spine, enabling strong W-shaped muscle bands to develop along its entire body. Its ability to swim fast was no doubt a key factor in its success while living in precarious seas inhabited by huge predators such as Anomalocaris.